Hi, thank you so much for stopping by to hang out with me today. I'm Lisa. And in today's video, I thought I would just do another little chatty sit down and share with you all what I've made so far in October, what I've started making um, that I should have finished, but my sewing machine kept jamming with the thread. <laughs> um, and yeah, we'll just kind of go from there. So I also picked up a couple of patterns at fabric recently and I don't have them handy. So I think I'll just share them in the next video that I do next week. Um, as for what I'm wearing, this is just a ready-made sweater. It's five degrees Fahrenheit today on October 30th. Um, and we did get some snow yesterday, which the snow part is normal this time of year. We usually get a little teaser snow, like right before Halloween. And then it gets a little more warm in November. And then it gets really, really cold end of November, December, and then winter really hits. Um, so I wasn't quite prepared for the five degree Fahrenheit weather today, nor were my chickens, but that's okay. Um, I love the color of this sweater. I just got this at a little boutique when we were in Glenwood Springs. Um, we went to the hot springs there. We're in Colorado. There's a nice hot springs called Iron Mountain. The other one is not very nice. Um, and I'd recommend if you ever want to go to the hot springs, definitely do your research because a lot of them in Colorado, the photos look like it's gonna be this most amazing magical experience. And then when you get there, you see the photo was taken from like one angle of one corner of the hot springs, maybe 30 years ago. Um, and they leave a lot to be desired. So if you ever want to go to hot springs, if you wanna ask me any questions, feel free to, cause I've been to a few that are very dicey here. Um, <laughs> but anyhow, um, so let's just jump into it. So I'm gonna get us a quick drink and, um, so the first thing I made for the month of October was the Paper Cut Patterns Estella Top and Skirt. And I actually have a web page open right now because I wanted to share with you all the different size ranges in this pattern. I don't know why, but on the Paper Cut Patterns website, I couldn't seem to find the two different pattern variations. I could only find the one in the ranges uh, UK 6 through 20. And I knew I saw a larger size range elsewhere. So maybe I just didn't search properly through the Paper Cut Patterns website, I don't know, but I did find it on the Fabric Godmother website, which is where I had recalled seeing it before. So I thought I'd share with you all the different size ranges. We'll go a little bit into um, the design fabric, and then I'll share with you all the size I chose, the fabric I used, and some takeaways that I thought were worth mentioning if you wanna make this yourself. Um, I think this is just the cutest with having the dress, a crop top that's not so cropped where your whole midriff is hanging out as well as two different skirt variations and also the fact that the top and the skirt are reversible or i should say the top and dress are reversible i think that's amazing because you get kind of two for the price of one not only cost but the amount of time you spent making the dress or top and skirt and i also like that it hits at the small smallest part of your waist and so i just really think that this silhouette is so flattering in all body types. I've seen um, people with all different size ranges and physiques making this dress and or top and skirt. And I just think everybody looks amazing in it. So I really, really love this. Um, and let's see, let's just jump into the sizes here. My brain is kind of half on today. Um, <laughs> I feel like it's been like that every day for the last couple of months. Um, as for the size ranges, so for the metric system, for the smaller pattern size range, UK 6 through 20, um, it ranges from a bust of 76 centimeters to 118 centimeters, or a bust of 29.9 inches to 46.5 inches. And that is the initial measurements, not the finished garment measurements. And with the paper cut patterns, they have a different size kind of uh, range, which is the sizes are size one through eight, and that's in the smaller size range. And then in the larger size range, it's UK 16 through 34, and the bust ranges from 106 centimeters to 154 centimeters, or 41.7 inches to 60.6 inches. Um, and so I just love, and that's also their size range for this would be the paper cut pattern sizes, six through 14. Um, it's an immediate or immediate, it's an intermediate pattern. I would agree with that. I could say maybe an advanced beginner could do this as well. Um, but there are some little fiddly bits with this pattern um, that I would probably concur that it would be intermediate depending on, I guess, whoever's judging whatever intermediate even means. Um, and the recommended fabrics are gonna be something with a little bit of a drape. You could use a linen, a cotton, a silk, rayon, um, and different blends is what they recommend. And also lightweight. Um, 
And I love that this has pockets. I've noticed for whatever reason, a lot of these indie patterns don't add pockets to their dresses. And I never remember to add them until after I've stitched up the garment. And then you think, oh goodness, I have like five different pattern pocket, um, pocket patterns. There we go. Um, just handy to pop into my dresses. And I always forget to. So I've started now writing on my um, pattern instructions. If it's a garment that doesn't call for pockets, I make a big note, make sure to cut out a pocket pattern. I should just cut them out and stick them in there. Um, but I, I love that they have pockets. And again, I love that the crop top is not so cropped to where you feel terribly immodest. Um, and it just shows a, a little bit of a smidge of your midriff. Um, well, I guess depending on which way you have the dress. So I'm going to show some pictures here. The, um, the side that has the wrap, of course, that's going to show off a little bit more of your midriff. And the other side is where you can really cover up your midriff if you kind of tie the wrap around your stomach. Um, but I just think this is great with skirts, with high-waisted jeans. You can wear it with trousers. You can dress it up. You can wear it casual. Um, I just I just love this. And with what I used, I went with a size 2. Um, my measurements, my bust is 34 inches, my waist is 26 inches, and my hips are 38 inches. And the two fit pretty well. I am on the shorter side. I'm 5 feet 2 inches. And I technically probably could have shortened the skirt. I went with a longer skirt variation. Um, I just left it as is, and I thought it was perfectly fine. Um, the fabric that I used, basically what I've made is my wearable mock-up. It was a viscose linen that I got from Joanne Fabrics. And I had mentioned in my last video that I kind of had a heart to heart with myself with some of my fabric choices. A lot of them have to do with the fabric I picked up from Joanne's. I've learned that Joanne's is great for wearable mock-ups because it's very cheap but the quality isn't quite there. A lot of the garments don't hold up as well when you're sewing and also um, when you're washing them. So I I made this the newbie kind of sewer mistake and I picked up a lot, a lot of fabric from Joann's when I first started sewing. And so now I'm just using it for wearable mock-ups. My other mistake was just I picked a lot of colors that I knew did not look good with my skin tone, but I thought they were cute and, you know, Again, you get excited when you first start sewing, even though it's been about two years in now. And as I was going through my fabric stash, I just realized there's just so much that I just didn't make sense. So again, I'm using those now for my wearable mock-ups and I'm starting to really understand the importance of making a wearable mock-up, especially if you buy more expensive fabric, which I'm doing now and I feel more confident in what I'm doing. It really helps you to really tailor your garments because you can make a lot of modifications and not care as much if you're kind of destroying cheaper fabric as opposed to, you know, your $25 a yard Liberty London fabric, 25 plus, I should say. Um, so I really didn't have to make any modifications at all. Um, I will say I want to actually make the same dress in the same colorway. I love this plum color and a better quality of a viscose linen. Um, I have discovered I really like using viscose linen. I like the drape and it doesn't wrinkle as terribly as a pure linen. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely wearable mock-up for many reasons. Um, so let's just kind of jump into everything. I did buy the paper version. I am one that always buys a paper version if I can because I write notes all over this, such as like add pockets, which I didn't need to do here, or I'll make notes of length and, or shorten depending on what kind of silhouette I want or different type of fabric that I think does or doesn't work as well, even if the pattern says you can use things. So um, this just every time I make a garment, I write all over these. So I even write the size that I cut out, things like that. Um, I know paper is not for everyone, um, whether it's budget or just personal preference, but I stare at a computer screen for eight, 10 hours a day, every day. So I really just don't want to look at my phone for instructions. I just, I need to kind of save my eyeballs as I've said before. Um, I have coffee and I have water here. So I'm, I'm going a little double fisted with my, my mugs here. If you're wondering what's going on. Um, <laughs> so the first thing I would say with this, oh, this I think is cute. How you, you can see how they have a couple of different variations. So this is um, this is the one that's going to cover your midriff more. This is going to show up a little, show off a little bit more. So if you're wanting to go for more of a modest look, maybe wear this towards the front. Um, but I think this is interesting how you can twist um, the front and make a completely different top style. It's just such fun ideas. Um, so the first thing that I thought I would just mention that I don't like about this pattern. There's not much that I didn't like, but this is one. And that is your seam allowance. So the seam allowance is one centimeter or 0.39 inches, which is about three eighths of an inch. I really don't like when patterns only have a three eighths inch seam allowance. I know it's to help, you know, save fabric um, 
or to be able to use uh, less fabric. But I don't have an overlocker and um, or serger. I guess it's kind of one of the same. And so for my seam finishes, I either do a French seam or I'll do a zigzag stitch if it's um, like a, a poplin or something that's not going to fray easily. Um, or sometimes I will use pinking shears, but I do prefer a French seam as I don't mind taking the time to make sure everything looks cleaner and more professional as my goal really is to make um, garments that are not just for one season and then rehome them. It's to make garments that I'm going to be able to use throughout my wardrobe pretty much until they get holes in them or maybe I get sick of them. But my goal is to make things that are quality that are going to last a long time. And so it's really hard to do a French seam with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Yes, I know you can modify your pattern pieces and cut them in a manner to where you actually have the 5 8 inch. I should have probably done that and I might actually do that moving forward. I might um, add some additions to the actual pattern pieces themselves. Um, so I ended up just doing a zigzag stitch for the seam finish. And with it being a viscose linen and it being a cheaper viscose linen, it just frayed terribly. So my, my seam finishes look pretty sloppy on this. Again, I'm okay because it's a wearable mock-up, but I just, I really, really prefer when pattern pieces have a five inch in seam allowance. So just my personal preference. Um, another thing I thought I would just mention, and this is just me not reading properly. Um, so when it comes to a little booklet like this, as opposed to like a big four pattern where if you have three or four versions, like version A, B, and C, let's say, um, a lot of times in the big four, you know, big sheet patterns, it'll say like after number three, for version A, skip to step seven. Let's say it'll stop on step three and it'll say skip to step seven. And then for version B and C, do skips, do skips, oh my gosh, <laughs> do steps four through six or something like that. You get what I'm saying? Like it'll give you clear cut instructions to stop here and pick up on another number. Hopefully I explained that properly. I think I interchanged skip and step a bunch of times. It doesn't do that in this guide. And so, you know, common sense just says just read, but you know, when you're kind of like moving and shaking and you're in your flow, even if you've read through the pattern instructions a couple of times, it's easy to act. Well, for me, it was easy to accidentally follow steps for the wrong thing. So you can see here, we have waist gathers, right? So this is a step and it says dress variation only. This is waist casing, it says top. Clearly it says top, but clearly it says dress, right? Like right there. But <laughs> I just got into my groove and I started actually doing this for my top. So again, you know, it's, it's cut and dry, but at the same time, if you're moving really fast, you can actually make a boo-boo. And there were only a couple of sections that actually had something specifically for just, just the dress or just the top, but I just, I don't know what I did. Um, I do always read my pattern instructions through at least once or twice before starting. I like to actually read them sometimes even before I um, cut out my pattern pieces, just so I can have a big picture of what I'm doing. Um, but I just thought I'd mention that again, that was just me and my user error issue, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Um, and the only other thing that I would say just to keep, an, well, it's personal preference and something that I wanna do different is the wrap. So for the wrap, <clears throat> for the top, obviously it's gonna cross over, you know, the front of your bodice, right? And then you're going to tie it. So the wrap doesn't, and this is covered in cat hair, my cats were just laying on this. So um, basically what you're gonna see, and again, this looks a little sloppy, but you're gonna see your rolled hem on the other side of the wrap. So as you're tying the wrap, you're just going to see a rolled hem kind of flapping around you know, on the front of um, your dress or in the back. I just didn't like how that looked. So personally for me, I'm actually going to make a backing to this. So I'm actually gonna cut out four pieces of my wrap next time. You can see this is kind of sheer, so it'll add some, um, some coverage too. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut out four pieces. I am going to stitch them right sides together on all three sides. And then I'm going to flip it the other way around so that it'll be completely enclosed. And I think it'll give a cleaner finish. You could even have fun with this and do like another color on the other side, like maybe a lilac versus plum. Like you have a dark color on one side and a light on the other, just to kind of give a pop of color. I just think that it would give a cleaner finish if you had this essentially lined or have a backing on this. So that's what I plan on doing. Again, just personal preference, but I thought that'd be worth mentioning. But um, all in all, I thought this was a great, 
um, outfit. I like, I'm starting to kind of get into making separates so that I can actually wear them with my jeans or wear them with other skirts. So I don't just have dresses as, um, I go back and forth. I get into my kicks where I want to wear skirts and dresses all the time. And then I just want to wear sometimes my gym pants or jeans and a cute top. So I like this because I think it's very versatile. Um, so all in all, I thought this was great, a great one to make. And I definitely intend on making other variations of this. Um, I might actually make the dress too, but I really do like the top and the skirt because I like having the separates. Um, so that's that. And okay, so the next one that I finished for the month of October, honestly, I might've finished the Stella top and skirt very end of September. I'll have to go look at my Instagram photos. That was the Greta blouse by Tara Dayton. And I love this because it has a raglan sleeve and it's very cool because it's a pattern um, drafting guide. So it'll teach you how to, to use calculations to figure out your measurements to make your top. So I loved this. I will say, I think I just made this with the wrong fabric. Um, I used a cotton lawn. I can't remember if this is a John Loudon or Robert Kaufman. I got this from Minerva. Um, I'll put it on the screen here. I love this fabric. It's a cotton lawn. It feels I don't want to say it feels like a poplin, but I feel like it doesn't have as much of a drape as like a Liberty London lawn. We'll just say that like a ton of lawn. Um, so I thought this was going to work out better, but I just think it has too much structure. You can't really see this very well here. I'll insert a photo of me in it. I think it just has too much structure for this style of blouse. Um, granted, I was planning on doing like a waist tie so that it would, this is not a very good example. Basically, I was going to do a waist tie here so that it would kind of hug into the waist and give a, a pretty little kind of bohemian silhouette. You guys can kind of see. I'll insert a photo. That was a horrible example. Um, I just think it's too bulky. I don't, so my body type, I have technically a pear shape, but I also have an athletic build to where it's almost like an hourglass boxy shape. That probably doesn't make any sense, but my, like my lats are a little bit builder, bigger, bigger, bigger builder, whatever you want to say built. <laughs> um, and so I just find that I don't like really boxy tops. I, I just need something that kind of hits in the right places. And I just feel like this wasn't it. So I thought of two different things. Either I would like to add an elastic waist and crop it and crop it to the height of like the Estella um, top to where it hits right at the top of my um, like high-waisted jeans line. So it's not like it's actually showing my midriff and just turning this into kind of like a, a crop top variation, or I'm going to completely take it apart and sorry, that's my cats. Um, there we go. Or <laughs> I'm going to completely take it apart and make something different. So I just feel like it's just way too big for me. My, I'm going to pause it. Cats, I don't know, just decided to start picking on each other and Miko likes to go in and he's the enforcer. Um, and he tries to keep the cats. Um, he tries to be the peacemaker, but he gets very worked up. So anyhow, so that's my plan is either to make this into a cropped variation, um, or I'm just going to take it apart and make, I'll show you two different patterns that I've thought of making with this. So I just love this fabric so much that I just don't want it to go to waste with a shirt that I'm probably not going to wear very often. Um, I do intend on using this pattern in the future. I think honestly, I probably do one without the ties and just leave a, um, leave this bit intact and maybe even do like, um, a looser drawstring and or elastic up top. So maybe you can even do like an off the shoulder type of kind of bohemian peasant blouse. So I love the pattern. I think it's great for a basic peasant blouse. Um, I just don't think I chose the right fabric. So that's what's up with that one. Um, but it's just, I do like the pattern drafting guide. It was very easy to follow. I liked her photos. Um, I think she did a great job still. It's just, I picked the wrong fabric, I think. And then lastly, um, I'm just going to show you all what I'm currently working on now. This is, oh, this is Miko, by the way. This is my little Papillon Pomeranian. I don't think he's ever made a cameo in the videos, but he is here now. He um, has what's basically doggy pink eye. I didn't know that was a thing or a doggy allergy. And I'm oh, sorry, all my animals are making noise. And so I had to take him to the vet on Saturday because he couldn't open his eyes for, well, pretty much from Friday night to Saturday morning. And I was so worried something was wrong with him. So he is now on doggy steroids. Um, but anyhow, okay. So the last, last thing that I'm making or that I'm working on right now 
is this Laura Ashley McCall's pattern, M8358. And I'm going with the size eight. I'll let you all know how that works out um, in my next video. I should have this done soon. I could have had this done very quickly as it was a very, very easy, the instructions are very easy to follow and there's not many steps to this and there's only a few pieces of fabric. But my sewing machine decided to start jamming something my bobbin, the, the little bit that you drop the bobbin in got knocked and I didn't realize it. So I did everything under the sun. I oiled my machine. I got a needle, got new thread. It just kept jamming. I spent like an hour trying to fix it. And finally, I, I don't know, I just kept fiddling around with it. And finally I got it to work. So, um, I could have been done with this. This could have been sewn up in maybe a couple of hours. This is a very easy one to do. I'm doing a view a, or no, sorry, view B. I can't read by the way. And here's the fabric that I'm using because I thought, how fun is this? So this is actually a Laura Ashley bedding set. Um, I got this at our local um, home goods as I was actually trying to find some bedding for our blow up mattresses when my mom and my sister were in town visiting. And I didn't realize that our blow up mattresses were king size. And I thought, well, this works out. I'll keep this and make a dress out of it because how pretty is this lovely little floral? It reminds me of like maybe almost like a 1940s um, maybe even fifties floral. I guess you could also say seventies too, depending on what style it is. But, um, so yes, yeah, so I've been holding off on using this for the right piece. And I thought I have to use Laura Ashley sheets for a Laura Ashley pattern. Now I will say this is more of like a cotton fabric, fabric, oh my gosh, <laughs> cotton fabric, um, cotton poplin. Oh my goodness. I'm so scattered from these cats now. It's a cotton poplin. There we go. And, um, it's an Ocotex. I don't know how you pronounce this. And, um, I can link it below if I can find it anywhere. If you guys ever want to pick it up, it's made in India. And so it's a thicker fabric. Whereas I think this probably would be more optimal with more like a cotton lawn or like a rayon or something, but I'll let y'all know how that goes as I only have a few more steps and it will be complete. Not exactly, um, exactly cold weather appropriate, but at least it's a thicker fabric and it's kind of a, a fall-ish colorway. So yeah, so that's what I've been up to. Sorry for the animal chaos and me being a little bit more scattered thereafter. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's what I'm working on now. And then I actually am going to be making two winter coats. I am doing that Jada fabric that I talked about before. Um, and that's going to be the Emmy 2001, um, dressed by Nomi patterns. And then I actually picked up a Vogue pattern. I think it's V9340. I don't know. I'll, I'll insert a photo here and I'll show you all the fabric. I'm going to pop a, a picture here too, that I just added to my cart. I just need to buy it from, Oh, I'm drawing a blank at the website. I'll, I'll pop the website of name up here and then the link below as well. Um, so yeah, I decided to make two winter coats this year as I, um, I don't have any good wool, wool coats or anything that's good and long to go with my dresses. I have, um, two vintage suede coats with, I think it's faux, um, fur around the neckline and they're from the seventies and I wear them to death and I'm just worried they're going to fall apart. Um, one's already kind of coming loose at some of the seams. So I need to stitch that up and I have that and I have a bright yellow coat, a Paxi puffer coat, but nothing that just looks nice with, um, my dresses and things throughout the winter. So I will let you guys know how those go as I'm hoping I can get those stitched up throughout the month of November. Um, so thank you so much for stopping by to hang out with me today. I'll be back next week showing you all some new things that I picked up and um, show you what I'm working on then. And I'd love to know what you guys are working on um, for the cooler months as, um, well, I know some of you might be in Australia, I don't know, um, to where it's warmer this time of year, but I'd love to know, are there any good uh, winter patterns that you'd recommend picking up? Thanks so much and I will see you all very soon.